Welcome to Finished Work International Ministries, a ministry that is on the cutting edge, changing lives around the world. As you let God in today and apply the word, expect a divine encounter and supernatural transformation. It is impossible for you to be defeated when you have the revelation of the will of God. It is impossible for situations to subdue you when you walk in understanding of what God is saying to you. Let the finished work of Jesus determine what you pray. When God is your source, you don't look back. You keep looking forward. You keep trusting Him. God, I trust you. Here's Apostle Faith Man Obuena. But the gifts of the Spirit is, you know, sometimes we just conclude that since I'm not calling to the fivefold office, like the office of the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the teacher, or the pastor, I can see the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit is available to every believer in the body of Christ. And every believer in the body of Christ can train themselves to respond to the leading of the Spirit when there is a flow of the gifts. We can train ourselves to respond to the leading of the Spirit. We can train, you can train yourself to know what God is doing and stay connected to what He's doing. You can train yourself to flow with what God is doing. And I like to say this to us tonight. If you don't train yourself concerning the things of the Spirit, it will be difficult for you to come into the will of God. It will also be difficult for you to enjoy the will of God. The will of God is available. But we're coming to His will when we know how to respond to His will. You know that scripture in Romans chapter 12 verse 2. He said, we should not conform to this world, but we should be transformed by the renewing of our, our mind. We should be transformed by the renewing of the mind because if our mind is not renewed with God's word, we can't be sensitive to his will. Your level of sensitivity towards the things of the spirit is directly related to your level of obedience and submission to his word. The level of sensitivity towards the things of the spirit is directly related to determine how sensitive you will be towards the things of the spirit. To the degree you submit yourself to God's word. That was why the scripture established in Philippians. It said, let this mind be in you that is in Christ Jesus. Why did he say that? That is the kind of mind that operates in the supernatural. That is the kind of mind that understands the supernatural. That is the kind of mind that flows in the supernatural. You can't flow in the supernatural without the mind of Christ. So when we renew our mind with God's word, we become sensitive to the person of Christ and his spirit and what he can do. So the gifts of the spirit is available, but the manifestation comes as a result of our yielding to the Holy Spirit. The gifts is available. And I'm, I'm of this opinion that the Holy Spirit is always willing to flow, to manifest. That's my thinking. The Spirit of God is always, if you have the Holy Spirit in you, he, he wants you to have the best. How many of you believe that? That God wants you to have the best. Third John verse 2. In third John verse 2, he said, I wish above all things, prosper and be in good health, even as also do what? Prosperate. Okay, we'll do John 10 10. He said, The thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So I have come that you do what? You have life and have it more what? Abundantly. 
Ephesians 1 verse 3. Blessed be the God of our Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places where? In Christ Jesus. Huh? He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. So you can see that he wants us to have manifestation. And manifestation begins to happen when our faith is in the direction of his will. I said manifestation of these gifts begins to happen when our faith is in the direction of his will. If we believe that the manifestation of the gifts of the spirit happens once in a while. Maybe when we feel like we did what is right, so it just happened. Or when we feel like, well, now I'm doing uh, right. You know, you look at yourself that you've performed right, that you can have the manifestation. We have to go beyond that. You see, God is a spirit. And those that worship him must worship him what? In truth and what? And in the spirit. We need to have an expectation for the manifestation of the gifts. I said what? We need to have expectation. If I don't have expectation, I can't come into manifestation. We need to have an expectation that today I will receive word of knowledge concerning this situation. Or whatever situation I am dealing with. I will receive a word of knowledge. Concern, the, the gift of word of knowledge is for everyday life. Because you have the spirit of God in you. And I know that the spirit of God always wants to communicate. That was why Jesus said I will send you the comforter. When he come he will guide him to what? All truth. His assignment is to guide you. And one of the ways he guides him to all truth is through this gift of word of wisdom. Word of knowledge and word of wisdom. He guides us with word of knowledge. Someone can be telling you something right now but you have the word of knowledge about it. And the Spirit of God wants you to come into a place where you have an expectation that he's willing to speak. If you don't have an expectation that the Holy Spirit is willing to speak or is willing to show you things or to reveal things to you, nothing will happen. We come into these gifts by faith. Huh? We step into the things of the Spirit by what? By faith. We we'll step into the things of what? Of the spirit by what? By faith. We'll if you're not walking by faith, you can't come into manifestations. You can't come into this experience where you can be able to receive from the Holy Spirit because he wants to show you something. He wants to reveal things to you. He wants to show you things. But if you're not walking by faith, even when he reveals it, you can't declare it. That was what the scripture established in 2 Corinthians 5 x 7. For we walk by faith and not by what? By sight. How do we walk? We walk by faith. And that faith is a product of revelation knowledge. Huh? We walk by faith. You can't truly walk by faith except you have God's word in your spirit. I said you can't walk by faith. Have God's word in your spirit. Why, why did I say that? Because faith is a product of the word of God. I said faith is a product of God. If the word of God is not in your spirit, my friend, you can't walk by faith. If the word of God is not in your spirit, you cannot operate by faith. If the word of God is not in your spirit, you can't come into the supernatural life. Although you have received the abundant life in Christ Jesus, but you can't come into manifestation of that life. You know, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. You know why you want that word to dwell in you richly? When the word dwells in you richly, the scripture said, out of the abundance of the heart, the man do what? The man speaking. Also, out of the abundance of the heart, you come into manifestations of the things of the Spirit. If there is an abundance of God's word in your heart, your faith is stirred up for manifestations. If the word of God is, this is why every day I wake up to listen to God's word. Every day. I walk out to listen. Before I came for this service, I will listen to some teaching in my, in my office there. I, will listen. I like to listen to the word of God. That is the only way I can do whatever I want to do. If the word is not there, forget it. No word, no power. 
No word, no power. No word, no energy. You always be getting tired. Always getting frustrated. Because the word of God is not in your spirit. Your spirit man needs God's word to flourish in the activities that are called Christian that have no passion for God's word. You have just met a believer that have no direction. I'm telling you. If you see any Christian that have no passion for the word of God, the word of God is not their passion. You have seen a believer that is not going to live in the reality of redemption realities. They cannot. They are born again, but they are oppressed. They are born again, but their life is shattered. They are born again, but they can't really come into manifestation of the will of God. Why? Because it takes life is spiritual. And God's word is a spiritual seed. Life is spiritual. Whenever you're looking at people, their life will either reflect their spiritual condition, where they are spiritually. And a minded is going to have a life that is in opposition to the will of God. I'm telling you. If a person is not spiritually minded, they'll be wasted. You can just see them being wasted. I'm telling you. One day, your head, they fall off and they just die like that. They just wasted their life. Because the word of God equips you to live their life according to the will of God. God's word equips you to live the life according to the will of God. So, when we get to consistently feed our spirit with God's word, it, it will help us to be able to assess the things of the spirit. A man who is in the word of God is quick to respond to the leader. He's quick to know when God is talking. Because it's in God's word. But if you're not in the word of God, if you're a kind of person that they always push you to come to church to hear the word of God, I don't pity for you. True. I feel for you. Because you have no idea of what can happen to you in the next few minutes. But you see, when you have the word of God in your spirit, it's for your benefit. Because there are situations that will show up in this life, your pastor may not be there. Nobody may be there. So what are you going to do? How are you going to stand your ground to deal with that situation? If the word of God is not in your spirit, well, how, do you, how do you pray? How do you speak? Where do you start from? Even when the Holy Ghost is trying to speak to you or bring the word to you, because the word of God is not in your spirit, you can't even decode what is going on. You'll just be helpless running from here to there because of lack of revelation. That was why Paul was praying so that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened. At this point, you'll be able to know what to do. When his understanding is enlightened, you're quick to respond to the flow of the Spirit. I want to say that again. I said, when your understanding is enlightened, you're quick to respond to the flow of the spirit. Why? Because your eyes of understanding is enlightened. There are people who walked into who walk into debt. They just walk into debt. This is debt, and they just walked into it. There was no restraint. Devastation. Everything was scattered. Everything was gone know that being spiritually minded opens door for the operations of the gifts of the spirit. I said being spiritually minded opens door for the operation of the gifts of the spirit. Because when you're spiritually minded you're sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. I said when you're spiritually minded you are sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. You are, you are talking to this business partner. By the Holy Ghost, you knew that the guy is lying. He just tell you. He just gave you a word of knowledge. I said, that guy just lied to you. Word of knowledge is not only when it comes to church. It's for everyday life. It's for, so, we can pray in tongues. I'm praying the spiritual expectation. I'm, I'm going to have the word of knowledge for this situation. Word of knowledge has to do with the situation that has happened in the past or what is the current situation happening right now or what you're dealing with right now. God can give you a word of knowledge of what to do 
a word of knowledge of what is going on or a word of knowledge of how to address the situation. He can give you a word of knowledge. This is what to do. What this person is telling you is not true. This situation is not right. You can receive word of knowledge to be able to deal with situation. The reason for word of knowledge is for you to make right decision. The reason why, when we say word of knowledge, it's not just knowledge you learn from school. Though. Hallelujah. It's not that kind of knowledge. Is somebody hear what I'm saying right now? It's not the knowledge you learn from school. That is not word of knowledge. Word of knowledge is God giving you a supernatural insight into what is happening right now or what has happened. Giving you what? A supernatural insight. You just have an understanding of what has just happened or what is happening currently right now. So it's not just knowledge you read, you read from book. Word of knowledge is not knowledge you read from books. It's not that kind of knowledge. This is a supernatural insight from the Holy Spirit for you to be able to decode or understand or be able to know what to do about a particular situation or an individual or a, whatever that you're dealing with in that season of your life. The Holy Spirit can give you supernatural insight about it to enable you to make right decision. So when we talk about word of knowledge, it is not something you study. It's not a kind of knowledge you studied. It is a knowledge that comes from the Spirit that has to do with what has happened or what is happening right now. It begins to show you, give you insight. Hallelujah. Let's, word of knowledge work with the gift of healing too. Like say, for instance, the preacher was ministering and said, there's a lady here. You have a fibroid. Let me say, the lady has a fibroid. That is what the preacher said. That's word of knowledge. It is by the spirit in you. And before I realize, the gift of healing come into play. Huh? So he said, in the name of Jesus, we'll command the fibroid to die to the root or in the name of Jesus, will command that fiber to come out, depending on how he was led to pray. Now, you can see that word of knowledge and the gift of healing are in operation to deal with a situation. I don't know what I'm making myself clear. I hear what I'm saying right now. Now, watch this. Word of knowledge comes from the Holy Spirit. It comes from the Spirit of God. It is the Spirit of God that supplies word of knowledge. It is the Spirit that supplies word of knowledge. He gives you insight. Someone is talking to you. And you just know. You know somebody can tell you things and it, it looks to she or to him. The thing that they are trying to fool you. Boy, just maybe pray in the Spirit and say, Lord, I just thank you. I, re I, I receive the manifestation of word of knowledge concerning this matter. Holy Spirit, just drop word of knowledge in my heart. Huh? And I notice that sometimes we don't ask. Now, the Bible said that the Spirit wills. But the scripture also says, ask it shall be given. Hey. 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 It said, I know, I know. It said, as the Spirit wills. So that means, as the Spirit will. But I also have redemption rights to ask. Sweet Holy Spirit, please give me a word of knowledge concerning this situation. Tell me what is going on. Is somebody hearing what I'm doing? Oh, it is an incident that has happened in the past. And you're trying to find out what happened 10 years ago. Do you know that the Holy Spirit can give you a word of knowledge of what happened 10 years ago with details. But you see, most of us in the body of Christ believe that only the people in the office of the prophet can have those manifestations unknowing to us that that is not what the scripture teach. 
Word of knowledge is available to have the manifestation. You have to yield yourself to the Holy Spirit because it comes from the Spirit. It comes from the Holy Spirit. By the Spirit, you can receive supernatural insight about what is going on right now. And word of knowledge leads to supplication or intersection. When God gives you a supernatural insight, it can lead to prayer. It's either you are interceding for someone, maybe you're just eating at home, and then you receive a word of knowledge. A lady just had an accident. You just had it, bam, in your spirit. You don't know the lady. He says, start praying. You start praying. You start praying. Or oh, this is your daughter, or oh, this is your son is going through challenge in the school. You are not aware. He has not called you to tell you, Dad, I have a problem. No, by the Spirit, you receive supernatural insight to know that there are some young men trying to harass your son. You see, the gift of word of knowledge is very strategic in our everyday journey. Very strategic in our everyday life. Unknowing to most of us, we have stayed with this mentality as the spirit will. So we are waiting for the spirit to will. <laughs> Hallelujah. Instead of us to cooperate with the Holy Ghost, because the will of God is for you to have manifestation of these gifts. You have to settle that in your heart. The will of God is that we should have the manifestations of the gift. What is the essence of the gifts if they are not being used? What is the essence of promising people that you're, they are going to have the manifestation of the spirit and then it's not at work? No. God's will, I know God to be a giver. I know God to be an... Oh my God, nobody gives like God. I know God. So it, it's not difficult for God to express word of wisdom. That in the next five minutes while you're praying in tongue. While you're praying in tongue. And let me say this to you. You're coming to things like this as you train your spirit. These things don't just happen. As you train your spirit, you're quick to understand these things. If you're not training your spirit with God's word, you won't be quick to get word. You won't be quick. Because your, your level of sensitivity hasn't gotten to that point. Where you'll be able to lay hold of what God is saying for that moment. And this is why I see sometimes believers can be frustrated. This is why I was, well, today we had this fellowship with pastors. I said, see, this is time to pray long prayers. Long prayer. When you talk about long prayers, it's only praying in tongues. Long prayers. You know, when someone comes and say, ah, it's not just praying. It's not just praying. It's not, let me tell you this. Heavy prayers. See, like now we're starting, most of you don't know what ha has happened since afternoon. So I have to just tell most of you and those watching. From Monday, we're starting 40 days. How many days I call it? 40 days of infallible proofs. We'll be coming here every evening. We're setting a tent of prayer here. Because there are certain people that you have questions around you, but you don't know how to answer it. There are problems that are standing before you. This is more than 10 years. This is more than 15 years. This is more than 20 years. It's standing before you. Let me say this to you. When it comes to the things of the spirits, if you don't pay attention, this year will come and end and nothing change. I've just told somebody. See, if you want change, there is a price for it. I'm telling you. If you want change, when I didn't, we didn't plan this. We came from the house this morning and drove into this place for this meeting. And when we showed up, our friend that was ministering the word of God read our key text for the year. When he read the text, about infallible proof, Acts chapter 1 verse 3. While I was seated down there, my God, it came like it blew up in my spirit. It said 40 days of infallible proofs. This is our team for the year. And this is half when in the second half of this year. My friend, I want to end well. There is something about spending time with God, praying, spending time with God. There are so many of us who have 
that our miracles have been diverted. Some things that were coming has been diverted. Somebody told you was to send you money, to send you something, and for nowhere they just change your mind. We don't have the money anymore. Or things. There are there are things as you begin to pray. See, as you spend time praying, you're quick to have word of wisdom. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge. As you spend time praying, in these 40 days of unlimited prayer, aggressive prayer, someone said, why should we pray? We have to pray because of what is ahead of us. We have to pray because of the days ahead of us. There are people who are just watching their life being wasted. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. How many of you are in? Anybody lifting his hand up? If you don't lift up your hand, I'm coming by myself. People will be watching the broadcast all over the world. Hallelujah. Whose fault is that? Our pastor, this is not working. Go and work your problem out. And I notice that people that when you call for prayers or call for things, some people just go and sit there and say, please, I cannot do that kind of thing. There's some people will be sending you prayer. Why are you sending me the prayer request? When we have an opportunity to pray. Why are you sending me the prayer request? Who told them God? They said an opportunity has come out to pray for 40 days. To wait on God. To spend time with God. You say, yes sir, I'm showing up. I'm, you know why? Because that's how you're going to change your situation. There are things we don't just do. We do them because we are led by the spirit of God. And as you begin to spend time in this day, in these 40 days, God will just give me the messages that will be preaching for that 40 days, things that we'll be doing. He has downloaded some key things that will be going on for these 40 days. 40 days of prayer, 40 days of breaking bread, 40 days of speaking the word, scriptures. You cannot remain the same spiritually. You cannot, you cannot stretch yourself and remain the same spiritually. I had a testimony today that blessed my friend Shada. I was so inspired by that testimony. So inspired. There is something about prayer that changes your story. Do you know what it means for somebody to be brought out of the mortuary after many days and they want to bury the person? And now everybody's going around and it was your turn to pass and you lay hand and life entered the person. A young man believing God to grow his church. Things were tough for the guy. Then the preacher was in a conference ministry. And when the meeting was over, I ran to the preacher. How do I get the fire? The man shouted with him. He said, pick up that tip and we're listening to it over and over. Went for a burial. For, for, a, for, for a burial. Everybody was passing. And when it was his turn to pass, the Holy Ghost said, lay hands. Do you lay hands on somebody that they brought from mortuary? You know what that is? The gift of faith was an oppression. Bam! It descended. As he laid hands, started praying, bless! Something happens. The, 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 the woman came back. I was told that the, the man, the woman's son, through his own room, a key on the guy. A church that was struggling with 20 persons every week. The next Sunday was 900 and something. Different. You don't want to pray. You want to watch. They watch him now. They say, Come on, let's pray. Say, Pastor, I'm very, very tired. Pastor, I don't have time. So, who will do it for you? Who will cut your feet? There are things that your husband cannot do for you. There are things your wife cannot do for you. No matter how I love my children, I cannot pray for them. When it has to do with them dealing with themselves, they have to learn to pray for themselves. There are things somebody does not know about you. You have to learn to take the responsibility to pray for yourself. Write down those prayer points, those things you're believing God for. There is a fire that brings revival. There is a fire. There is how you begin to press in. This same family that everybody is going north, people are misbehaving, things are going off. As you begin to pray, you start aligning the destiny of the family line. Some things are not talk. You can't talk some things. I'm telling you, you will talk until you get tired. You think it's by counseling. Who have time to come and sit for three hours be counseling somebody? What kind of counseling is that one? I prefer to cast that demon out than to do counseling.
And that fire comes when we begin to spend time with God. This is the season to rearrange your life. Don't be accepting defeat. Take this 40 days. You say, journey with God. Even if you read one scripture every day for 40 days, you have what? 40 scriptures you have read. Is it not true? Huh? If you read one scripture every day for 40 days, it's not 40 scriptures. I have a quote that said, if you read the Bible, one verse of the Bible every day for one year, it's 365 scriptures. That's a lot of word. <laughs> That's what? A lot of word inside your spirit. And as the word is making its way into your spirit, the energy will begin to rise. Most things you're looking for is in his presence. I said most things you're looking for, these things you're running around, is in his presence. So, so when I see people running around from place to place, I say, God, help them. Please help them. Because they think it's by running around that will solve your problem. They run around to this place, run around. This is the month of June. Next month is July. So if we are starting this meeting by Monday, by 27th of, of July, we're done. And let me say this to you. Even if you did not join us in the prayer and do what we're doing, that day will still come. You know, somebody told me something one day, said, even if you don't go to school, when you be 30 years old, you will still be what? 30 years old. <laughs> but if you go to school, even when you're 30 years, you're, you're 30 years with your degree. I don't know what I'm saying right now. So even if someone did not join to do these prayers for these 40 days, 28th of, uh, 27th of July, we we'll stick up. <laughs> but imagine you are spending time to say, man, when I went to my, I need to bring out my materials, things, getting ready. You don't know the day that your visitation will come. Maybe it's because of you, they are setting the meeting safe. You don't have an idea whether it's because of you. Maybe there's one federal appointment coming. One federal appointment, federal appointment coming. You have no idea. But white will start sending these prayers up. The rain will begin to fall. As we pray, we are quick to receive the word of knowledge. We are quick to receive. Because the Holy Spirit sometimes ministered from him because they didn't understand what he said. Hallelujah. Lift your hand and say, Holy Spirit, help me to flow with you. Help me to connect with your will. Help me to receive from you. How did Jesus knew that the woman touched her and said, Virtue have left me. What is that? Well, he had a word of knowledge. <laughs> but they said the crowd was, there was a great price. People are touching you everywhere. But he said, No. He had a word of knowledge. The virtue left. Someone has touched me. When word of knowledge is in operation, you make decisions that protect your moment. Whatever that will make me pray more, I want to have it. Tell you, whatever that will make me pray more, my friend, I'll go for it. Whatever that will make me stay longer before God. That's my vacation. That's my leisure. But there are people you see today who won't see them tomorrow. One day see them, they're, they're like a plant. They just came up. They just cut them at the same time. Don't you know that words kill people? Somebody just started the business and somebody was passing. Hmm, this one is the business. Five days from now, she will close it down. What has landed though? Word has landed. But what kind of word? Hmm. She just got married. If or not, they will divorce. Word has been thrown in. Unknowing to most people, there are words thrown to their destiny. And they see those words, those words that were spoken, controlling their lives. 
There are vibes. But when you begin to pray, you start breaking those vibes. The Holy Ghost will begin to give you a word of knowledge of what somebody said three years ago. And then you begin to break the limitation. Life is spiritual. Only spiritually minded people will become leaders. Will become champions. Will become winners. Will become achievers. Life is spiritual. Some people are at the mercy of what they are going through. No, we are not expected to be at the mercy of what we are going through. Because we have the Holy Ghost in us. We have the Spirit of God in us. We shouldn't be at the mercy of the situation. We should exercise our authority over the situation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. How can somebody go into something and you don't know that that thing has no future and they just ended on the roadside? How can somebody embark on a journey that will have no destination? How? See, the worst thing you can do in this life is to live a life where you don't acknowledge the Holy Ghost. It's going to be stressful. But when you begin to acknowledge the Spirit, He will show you what to do. Holy Ghost, help. Holy Spirit, show me what to do. He reveals things based on expectation. One of the ways God reveals things to us is based on our expectation. If you do have an expectation, how can things be revealed to you? Expectation. Something wants to bring a problem. And so the problem was supposed to come in two months' time. But well, you saw it today and start addressing it in the place of prayer. You start addressing it. You start addressing it. Why? Because you saw it. How can you be going to people to see for you? Looking for people to look for, to see for you. That place, see for me. See for, how can? When you have the Holy Spirit in you, who can see than the who can see more like the Holy Spirit? Who can reveal things like the Spirit of God? Nobody. But most of the time, we don't pay attention to him. He knows more about the situation that you do. First Corinthians chapter 12. Hallelujah. If we don't finish today, we'll finish on Thursday. Continue. First Corinthians 12. I'd like us to read from verse 7. He said. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit without. The manifestation of the Spirit is given. But the, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given. Is what? Is what? To every man to profit. Do you have Amplify? Or anything? Let me just see. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Okay, said, so but to each one is given the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, the evidence, the spiritual illumination of the Spirit for good and for profit. So it is for what? For good, for your good. And for what? For your profit. So if there is no manifestation, there will be losses. Huh? If there is no manifestation, there will be what? There will be losses. You will lose things. You will lose what the Lord has given to you. God can give you something and that thing left your hand. I've seen people that God gave them something and they missed it. God gave them something. God put a relationship in their life that will help them go up. They start misbehaving with the person until the, the person just withdraws his supposed to get out from that place. And they begin to suffer and begin to struggle because sometimes when God brings help your way, he's just showing you mercy as you can take advantage and grow and become somebody responsible. But a lot of people miss their helpers. They never knew how to handle their God-given relationship. By word of knowledge, you know when you step into a place of destiny. By word of knowledge, you know when you step into a place of destiny. And the Holy Ghost said, this is the place. That was what happened to us for that house. 
When I got to that place and the Holy Ghost just said, this is the place. Just one word. You know what it means? You want to pack into your house? Before you, you saw your house, you know, you, you, know, you know, some people can just do all this kind of 419 something now. A house that is filled with things. You say you want to rent it. How can, do you, is it what you do? You see a house that is having people's items that are still inside the house. And they tell you they want to rent the house. In the natural world, what do you do? Is <laughs> it not me? You are seeing items, living things items. In the natural, you just back out. You just say, it's not me. but I heard the Lord said, this is the place. You need word of knowledge to make decisions. You need word of knowledge. Because with that word of knowledge, coming in that situation, the spirit of God will pull you out of the inheritance. That word of knowledge coming in, what will happen? The spirit of fear, because of fear, you just, oh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. He said, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. He has said, I'm not sure more than 10 times, so faith for I'm not sure has come. Did you hear what I said? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure you're going to make comments. Huh? You have said it how many times? Five times, ten times. I'm not sure. And what the next thing they'll do? They back out. But when you have the manifestation of word of knowledge, what is the place? I said, yes, sir. I have come to the place. These 40 days, of infallible proofs. Friend, I see where transfer. As many that will follow us in this journey, they will have testimony to tell. I'm telling you, this is an opportunity to rewrite your story. Because it was not planned. It's not in our calendar. It's not in our... I can't even think about it. How can I do that kind of thing? You know how many things I do every day? But when the Lord said this is a focus... I say yes, sir. That you take these 40 days of prayer and for watching me live today, online, you're joining us 40 days praying, breaking bread, and speaking words. Your story will not remain the same. Hallelujah. Anytime you stretch spiritually, you don't return back the same way you started. Anytime you stretch spiritually, and we need to stretch it. Hallelujah. A man in the flesh will be scared, but a man of the spirit, he won't. Because it's an investment, first to my spirit. Hallelujah. So look at verse 8. I'll read that verse 8 and we'll round up. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 8. He said, for to one is giving word of wisdom. Word of what? Word of wisdom has, is, an, is a supernatural insight that has to deal with what is ahead of you. Either what is ahead of you or what is coming to you. Look at this. He said, to one is giving. All right, this amplified. Let me just read this. So, to one is giving in. And through the Holy Spirit, the power to speak a message of wisdom. And another, okay, a message of wisdom. That's how I put it. But it was supposed to be, that's actually wisdom. That word of wisdom has to do with what is, uh, what is coming. It has to do with the future. Having supernatural insight about the future. Having what? Supernatural what? Inside, he said, for to one is given the spirit of what? For to one is given by the spirit, by the spirit. To one is, to what? For to one, for to one is given by the spirit, what, the word of wisdom. The what? The word of wisdom to another, the word of knowledge. So, word of wisdom is a supernatural insight. Word of wisdom is prophetic. I said what? Word of wisdom is what? Is prophetic. Thank you. 
Word of wisdom is what? It's prophetic. This is why in the office of the prophet, in the office, in the office of the prophet, the dominant gift that always in operation is word of wisdom, uh, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, the gift of prophecy are in operation in the ministry of the prophets. Hallelujah. So word of wisdom is a supernatural insight of what is to come. You just know. Five years from now, look at what I see coming. That's word of wisdom. It's a supernatural insight that gives you knowledge of the future. What is about to happen? What is going to happen? By the spirit. It is the spirit that reveals that to you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. It's the spirit that reveals that to you. Some hope can be restored. I said what? With word of wisdom, hope can be restored. She's so scattered. She's so frustrated. He's so depressed. Then word of wisdom came. Hope was restored. Faith was revived. Strength came. Because there was a word of wisdom that created hope in her. By this time next year, what is that? Word of wisdom. It's a supernatural insight of what is about to happen that has not happened. By the Spirit we saw that. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Are you having a good time tonight? Hallelujah. As we pray, we'll start having these manifestations. As we pray, you're about to give up on your school, your vision, what God has called you to do, or your church, or whatever God has asked you to do, or your business, or relationship, and then word of wisdom came. Hope was revived. Strength came. He said, I'm going to pursue that vision. I'm going to go after that dream. I pray for you tonight that you be sensitive to the spirits to enjoy the operation of his person. <laughs> I like that. You be sensitive to the spirits to enjoy the operation of his person, the manifestation of his person. Thank you, Father. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. We'll continue here by, by Thursday. Hallelujah. Continue Let's let's pray in the spirit. Let's tell him thank you. Rado bosha kababa, break to se kambla des ketelembro dosa kababa. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Makupa prateso koma prete se kandali bro dosa kapalinto bosa ndaba. Lende bosa kendoli kama alandre se tomandre se tombre de daba. Rendro se kababa brede se kababa le kababa. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Landro se karaba se toro bosa kababa. Re koro bosa kababa. He said, Lord, help me come out from this situation. Then I heard the Lord said, if you choose to trust me, you have victory already. If you choose to trust me, you have victory already. If you choose to trust me, you have victory already. You, you're praying. He said, Lord, Lord, help me to come out of this situation. And then I heard the Lord said, if you trust me, you're already out of it. I, then I heard the Lord said, you don't have to worry about it if you have talked to me about it. Wow. That's the word for somebody right now. What? The Lord said, you don't, God said to me to say this to you, there's someone that you're listening to me right now, he said, if you have told me about it, you don't have to worry about it, you have to stay in faith. Thank you, Holy Ghost. If you have told the Lord about it, he said, you don't have to worry about it, you have to stay in faith concerning it. And when you stay in faith concerning it, you're going to have manifestation. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let's pray in the spirit. If you're watching this broadcast right now or you're here and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, one of the greatest decisions you can ever make in this life is to come to the person of Jesus Christ. If you want to receive him, you can say this with me. If you want to receive Christ, you want to be born again, you want Jesus to be the Lord of your life, you can say this after me. Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart 
that God have raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Amen. If you pray this prayer with me, it means you're born again. And the Spirit of God is going to lead you from this day forward. I want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's Faith Man Teachings on YouTube. When you subscribe, you have the opportunity to receive God's word that will empower you to take the lead in the right direction. And also today, I want to encourage you to consider watching us on Finish Work TV. Tell your friends about finishworktv.com. Our passion is to bring God's word to you right where you are. And you can have that experience of life-changing revelation of the word of God as you stay connected to finishworktv.com. And you can get our book on Amazon. For the things you need to know about your future is available on amazon.com. You can have access to that book and it can be a blessing to you. And also, if you're watching this broadcast, you want to support, you want to give your offerings, or you want to sow your seed, you can go to finishworktv.com and slash giving. You can use your card to do your giving. And I pray that the blessings of the Lord will rest upon you. Until our next broadcast, please don't forget this. There is greatness in you, and Jesus is coming soon. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory.